it's Matt here from Scoop in Response. Today we're going to be looking at a brand new commander that's joined us with Jumpstart. Ruvak the Grand Eloquent is a 3 mana 1-4 human advisor that reads, if an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead. So if it wasn't abundantly clear, we'll be making a mill deck today. In addition to this video, we've also prepared a comprehensive primer on Moxfield, which you can find in a link in the description. Milling is an alternative win condition where if a player attempts to draw a card with zero cards in their library, they instead lose the game. So our deck is designed to cause our opponents to empty their libraries right into their graveyard and lose the game in the draw step of their next turn. While the commander himself is quite pricey at $45, Jumpstart is an unlimited print run. So as long as it remains popular, we should expect to see the circulation continue to expand and prices drop over time. The deck itself has been designed with budgets in mind, as not everyone will love playing a mill deck, so it makes sense not to blow your whole wallet on testing it out. We've limited the number of non-staple cards as best as possible, and kept the overall deck cost under $300. The deck also runs 20 copies of Persistent Petitioners and 26 Basic Lands, making it considerably easier than most decks to assemble from scratch. Our deck will win in one of the following ways. Incremental mill using a whole bunch of value enchantments. One shot an opponent using sorceries and brewback, milling an entire library in one go. Comboing off with untap effects. Light stacks to make it hard to interact with us. Flying under the radar. We won't appear to be particularly threatening if our opponents have never played versus our deck before. And protecting our commander and key cards. For creatures, we've got Cryptic Trilobite, Shrieking Drake, 20 copies of Persistent Petitioners, Prismite, Seagate Stormcaller, Silver Mirror, Thassa's Oracle, Fidalcan Engineer, Alloy Mirror, Emery, Lurker of the Lock, Solemn Simulacrum, Tidal Barracuda, and Fleet Swallower. For Planeswalkers, we have Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, and Teferi, Master of Time. For Sorceries, we have Maddening Cacophony, Merchant Scroll, Traumatize. For Instance and Sorceries, we have Brainstorm, Mystical Tutor, Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, Visions of Beyond, Brain Freeze, Dramatic Reversal, Muddle the Mixture, Archmage's Charm, Cryptic Command. For Artifacts, we have Altar of the Brood, Condra's Bobble, Soul Ring, Folio of Fancies, Isochron Scepter, Lightning Greaves, Sapphire Medallion, Cloudstone Curio, Kefnet's Monument, and Midnight Clock. For Enchantments, we have Mystic Remora, Drowned Secrets, Back to Basics, Intruder Alarm, Memory Erosion, Propaganda, Ristic Study, Sphinx's Tutelage, Teferi's Tutelage, and Teferi's Ageless Insight. And for lands, we have Castle Vantress, 26 Island, Mikikoro, Center of the Sea, Mystic Sanctuary, and Teleria West. We can think about this deck as having two groups of pieces, our Persistent Petitioners, and our enchantments and utility artifacts or creatures. While there are a substantial amount of two or three card combos, we must think about them in respect to our goal of milling 300 cards in total. Until we line up opportunities to execute a one-shot or an infinite mill for the win, we have to rely on our deck's ability to incrementally mill. A great way to think about your lines up until the point where you can go off is the mana investment versus the number of cards milled. Four persistent petitioners is a total of eight mana spent and can mill 12 to 24 cards per turn. It's straightforward when it comes to casting everything from the hand, but when you've got half of a combo on the board and the other half in the hand, and you should be thinking about how each of these spells will impact the number of cards your opponent's library is going to be milled by to the greatest effect this turn. One of the most common questions is, should I share the love or should I concentrate my efforts? There's really no simple answer, unfortunately, as it largely comes down to the makeup of the pod. Personally, I believe that sharing the love just nets you lots of potential enemies, whereas concentrating your efforts will only generate one threat for you. In my experience with the deck, your early game plays itself and your mid game is filled with complex choices about how you spend your mana. Gameplay has proven to be quite fun for me at least. You're either going to win quickly in the mid game or you're going to lose quickly. Finding and keeping a balanced hand is critical. You don't need to destroy the world turn one with this deck. If you're playing a mid-level table, you'll probably be the last person targeted as bigger threats will be more immediate. Assessing if you need to play control and light stacks or be proactive with incremental mill is where your decisions will be centered in the mid-game. We don't have any life gain in the deck unless we're playing Aetherflux Reservoir, and losing a persistent petitioner to a block really hurts. Be mindful of the creature-based decks in your pod and try and make friends. Assuming you've not revealed too much about one-shots and your win conditions, you either want to get yourself into a heads-up and race your life total versus their library, or win in a big storm turn versus the whole table. There are definitely situations where you can save someone from death by eliminating their threat, which may have turned on you the following turn. 
We've got a number of infinite combos and loops to help us out with the deck, most of which have plenty of resources for how they work online. But if you'd like more info on how to execute any of these in particular, please leave a comment on the video or in the Moxfield Primer link and we'll get back to you with more specific questions. Persistent Petitioners are the simplest combo of the deck. Tap 4 advisors to have an opponent mill 12 cards. They're the backbone of the mill engine outside of our instant wins, but with a bit of help they have you milling huge numbers in no time. Enchantments and Artifacts are our secondary engine with Drown Secrets, Memory Erosion, Sphinx's Tutelage, Teferi's Tutelage and Altar of the Brood all putting in work. We want to keep a few of them on the board at all time, but in conjunction with our primary mill tools, these will really add up quickly. With our persistent petitioners, you can execute a win loop, and if you've had experience with Tulane or similar tap or untap decks, you'll probably be familiar with this. You cast your fourth persistent petitioner from your hand. As it enters the battlefield, the Cloudstone Curio triggers and the Intruder Alarm triggers go onto the stack. You respond to the Intruder Alarm trigger by tapping your four persistent petitioners to mill 12 or 24 cards. The Intruder Alarm trigger resolves and your creatures untap. You respond to the Cloudstone Curio trigger by tapping the four persistent petitioners to mill 12 or 24 cards and then your Cloudstone Curio trigger turns one of your persistent petitioners to your hand. You repeat this until out of mana. Once this loop is set up, it only requires two mana to mill 24 cards or only one mana if you have Kefnet's Monument or Sapphire Medallion. This works out to be four to eight mana per opponent to mill their entire library or less have you been incrementally milling them prior to this turn. Shrieking Drake plus Altar of the Brood or Drown Secrets. A great source of incremental mill. Each bounce of Shrieking Drake will mill one to each opponent or two with Brewback. Combined with Drown Secrets, each mana spent will mill a significant number of cards. Intruder Alarm, Shrieking Drake, and a Mana Dork. If you've got four persistent petitioners on the field, this combo will allow you to mill 12 or 24 cards per one mana. It's an instant win thanks to infinite mill if you have a mana dork like Silvermere or Aloe Mere. If you have Brain Freeze, you can take advantage of your storm count and win the game on the spot that way too. Cloudstone Curio and Mystic Sanctuary. Don't forget your lands have triggers with Cloudstone Curio, so you can recur Mystic Sanctuary to continue putting choice spells on the top of your library. Isochron Scepter plus Dramatic Reversal. You've got infinite untaps and infinite mana if you have enough to create three from dorks and rocks with each untap. While Dramatic Reversal is the primary choice for Isochron Scepter, don't be scared to try other targets. Brain Freeze is Millstorm on a stick, which is absolutely fantastic. Brainstorm, a great way to draw your cards, and particularly if you've got Teferi's Tutelage, Sphinx's Tutelage, or Teferi's Ageless Insight. Visions of Beyond is a bigger brainstorm if you're in the later stages of the game. One shots. Traumatize, Maddening Cacophony, and Fleet Swallower all represent instant wins if you can do your thing with them. Resolving any of the spells while Bruvac is on the field is an instant kill on the target player, or all of them, for a kicked Maddening Cacophony. Fleet Swallower obviously has to attack for this to happen though. If you find yourself really enjoying this deck, there are a number of upgrades that you could consider. Some of them may already be in your collection of cards. These cards include Jace the Mind Sculptor, Thrumming Stone, Walking Ballista, Force of Will, Fierce Guardianship, Mana Drain, Cyclonic Rift, Mana Crypt, Urza, Lord High Artificer, Aetherflux Reservoir, Archive Trap, Mesmeric Orb, Painter Servant plus Grindstone, Dead Eye Navigator plus Peregrine Drake, Howling Mine, and Brazen Borrower. In my experience so far, Bruvac has presented an exceptionally fun commander experience that's made some awesome and varied game states. If you've enjoyed this content, please consider supporting us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and checking us out on Moxfield. We also have a Discord available which will be linked in the description. Thanks again and bye for now.